I just want you to entertain this question with me. What if Chick-fil-A just stopped selling chicken, stopped doing those great, amazing waffle fries, and they started serving people in healthcare? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Chick-fil-A serving people in healthcare? I'm talking about Chick-fil-A trained doctors, Chick-fil-A trained nurses. Like, think about that. A world of healthcare where Chick-fil-A was the one that was taking care of your grandma. You wouldn't have no concerns. You would have like zero concerns because the way that they handle their chicken and the way that they handle their, their fries, my pleasure. Sweet tea. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, how can I help you? My pleasure. You wouldn't even hesitate. Now, isn't that sad that Chick-fil-A and the way that they take care of chicken and fries, and they do a great job. I'm not, they do it. And their customer service, the way that they take care of people, it's amazing. But yet, when we think about healthcare, it's like if they were to take over healthcare, you'd be like, oh, that's great. That's good. You better believe it's great customer service. But I think I think there's everyone that experiences a bad nurse or a frustrated nurse or a nurse that doesn't take the time to really educate. It, 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 it's tough, right? There's two sides to every coin. And what I mean by that is you've got healthcare clinicians, workers who are exhausted because they're constantly taking care of patients and families and and COVID really didn't help, right? It really didn't help that much. But then you've got that high turnover rate in the healthcare industry. You've got um, low compensation because insurance is, is the one that's really, you know, manipulating and really has the say and how get how people get paid in healthcare. When you've got Chick-fil-A, which is totally different because it's a cash-based system. It's a price. You, they charge the price. They get to say, hey, I want the chicken to be X amount of dollars. And that X amount of dollars has great you know, margins that can allow for people to get paid and have good benefits and have all those things. So you've got those disparities, right? But when, but when you really think about it, when you hear someone say, if Chick-fil-A took over healthcare, you would first think about bedside manner. You'd think about customer service. You'd think about it being about the person and the patient. And you would think about feeling treated with respect and honor and dignity, and you could trust them. You know that they're gonna deliver on whatever it is that they're talking about or doing. Uh, if you had a new diagnosis and you had no idea about it, you know that that doctor would take the time and say, hey, well, you know, let's sit down, let's, let's see what's going on. Why? Because they were trained with excellence. They were trained with that demeanor, that that intentionality, that that, you are there for the person that's in front of you. And healthcare is yearning for that type of consistent bedside manner, that consistent there. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some great healthcare companies out there uh, everywhere, right? But there's people get a bad taste in their mouth when they experience bad care. Just like you go to a restaurant and you experience bad care, you get a bad taste in your mouth. But the reality of it is not every... Healthcare company is bad, but also not every healthcare company is good. Um, but yeah, I think what we need to do as healthcare workers and healthcare organizations, if you are an administrator, if you're a CEO, if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, we have to remind ourselves to put ourselves in our patient's shoes. We have to remind ourselves, what would it mean? What would it be like if I was in their shoes? How would I want to be treated? You know, how would I, would I want someone to just rush in and talk to me about something? No, I would want someone to take the time and to sit down and to be tender and to, and there's, there's a way to also be tender and firm at the same time, right? So we have to, as healthcare practitioners, remind ourselves to just say one phrase, my pleasure.